Good morning, everyone. My name is Cheryl Lovard, and this is my presentation on malware. Everybody has seen it in one form or another. We're going to go over some minor definitions. A virus, self-replicating piece of code, adware, displays unwanted advertising. You got spyware, exactly what it does. It spies on your computer, monitoring every keystroke web browser you go to. You got your browser hijacker that directs your browser to a predetermined website. You got your bots that infect, it's an application carrying out an automated, automatic task on your computers. You got your microvirus, it type, type of virus that are written specifically to alter macros. You got your ransomware, hold your data that you have as hostage and requires most of the time money and they delete a lot of your files. Trojan horses hides itself looking like a normal piece of uh, file. You got your warrants. It doesn't need any human interaction and it does not need to attach itself to a program to harm it or to delete it. I got one little video for you. Question for you guys: What's a way to keep the one way that you'll never get a virus, malware, Trojan, anything affecting your system? Mr. Bent. Don't browse the internet. Exactly. That's the only one sure way. But we do have precautions in taking care of how to protect our systems and this is one of the pop-ups. Uh, if you ever see this, what do you do to get it, this out? Mr. Kevin? Exactly. Anything you put, click on this ad will redirect and can download. You got drive-bys that automatically, you don't have to do anything but go there Click on it, you're going to click an X and it's going to download that file program, string of code to your system. Now, we got to plan our attack. Anybody that ever goes into battle, and if you're doing anything in life, you plan out a step-by-step -step directions or anything. But in the cartoon, we're going to strap at 0500, unless, of course, they say they're sorry and spoil everything. Well, if it's not going to happen. A virus doesn't just leave. We don't have a spray to spray it, a fly swap to beat it to death. We actually have to go in and take care of it and eradicate it from the system. So our first step, we got to identify what malware that's on the system. Is it a pop-up ad, browser redirect, a rogue antivirus, slow performance, lockup, internal internet connectivity issues, applications crashing, updates fail. Problems with files, do they enlarge or do they get smaller? 
problems updating your antivirus, malware, and invalid digital certifications. So, step two. Most of us will be working in networking, so the one thing that we definitely want to do first of all is quarantine that node off of our network because we don't want it to go out and affect the whole system and collectively bring it down our whole network. Step three, we're going to disable system restore. Why do we want to do this, anybody? Mr. Kevin. Do what? So the virus is infected, or when you go to reset it, it'll put it back on. Exactly. Mr. Marshall? That's the same thing, obviously. All right. So here comes where we're going to get down into the ditch lines, the foxholes, and start our work. We're going to re remediate the infected system. When an infected computer will not boot, it's more than likely that virus is in the boot manager, the boot loader, the kernel mode for the drivers for the startup. In this system, we can go into Windows recovery environment and start up the repair process. You can uh, take the hard drive and put it in another system to run an antivirus software on it. But before you ever do that, you go in and make sure that that system's up to date on its OS, your firewalls, everything is securely as possible before you put that infected piece of hardware into your system so you know your system's protected. We're going to run, you can run that from a network-based computer through it. If it, you can't ha have it isolated, you can go and download your anti-virus software on a CD or a flash drive and then boot the computer off that going into your BIOS firmware and setting it up to boot from that and run it. When you are running these rescue CDs, flash drives, always your first time take it to the full scan so it's going to go into everything on that computer and look for any strings of codes and virus signatures so it can eradicate them. It's not going to take one scan. You go in, you run it, you look at it, you do the research on it, find out where it's hiding, you're going to run another one. You're going to reboot. You're going to run another one. And 9 out of 10 on your list, I'll give you a couple of that I've used before. You're going to use two or three different kinds to go in and make sure that system is, you don't have anything. And it's a total process going in, running that scan, taking care of what you see, rebooting, running that scan again before you can in eradicate the infection off of that system. And for you guys that have been where I'm at, right behind me, the guys coming in new, these viruses will go in to your beehives, and you're going to have to put your bee suit on and go in there and look. And before you do anything to these hives, these registries, you always back them up. 
before you delete anything, make sure you have these backed up because you go in here and you delete a file from one of these files, you can totally destroy your system to the point it won't, will not be able to boot again. So you go in, you're looking, you see something, back up these files, go in, delete it, and look at the system, reboot, bring it back up and see how the system is working. All right, we've cleaned the system up. We don't have anything popping up on our scans. It looks like it's back to operating. We're going to protect the system with scheduled scans and updates. Why, as us, as IT person, want to make sure that system's protected and got scheduled scans? Just one. So you don't have to run through that same process again. Exactly. Will the end user know if you get say, all right, here's your laptop, here's your system, it's ready to go. Would they know to go back in there and set that process up? Keeping the windows updated. Your firewalls. That most people they know how to get on there, go do what they need to do. Go look at what they want to do. I think they're too lazy. No, you got a lot of people a lot of scared too, also. There's a lot of variables. Me, I didn't know a lot of this until coming in. Uh, this had always infatuated me how they worked. That's the reason I'm here. Things I'm learning, I had no control. I knew what I wanted to do. I knew where to go get information, but was it a legit site? Back then, no, I just click on anything. My daughter goes, that's an ad, mom. Now I know these things. Okay, now that we've got there, step six, we're gonna enable the system protection and cre <coughs> create the restore point. Back to what Marshall, most people don't know how to re Great, that restore point. We've got the system clean, we've got it eradicated, it's working great, so if we create a restore point and they do something that's bad and they call us back and say, oh, I've deleted this, now what do I do? We created the restore point. We can roll the system back and have what they need at there within just a few moments. Again, our last step. This is where we come into play a lot. The biggest role, after we've cleaned the system up, most people don't understand what they're doing to get these. I've known people go, why is my computer always crashing? Why can't I do what I want to do? You're going to download these games. It's free. Free. Is anything free? Not even love is free. You've got to give it to get it back. So it's hiding in that application and being downloaded. So we as IT have to take the moment and get back down the earth, explain to that end user how to stop doing what they're doing. You don't have to click everything on every page you go to. In my conclusion, we've talked about the different types of malware. We went over how to remove and keep a system clean. And we spoke about educating the end user. Your seven steps. We're going to identify the malware system. We're going to quarantine the system. We're going to disable system restore. We're going to remediate the infected system. We're going to protect the system with scheduled scans, scheduled updates. We're going to enable system protection. We're going to create a restore point. And we're going to educate the end user. 
Have I missed anything? Anybody got any comments, inputs, anything? Mr. James. Is there a safe way to practice removal amount, remove the malware from the system? How to safely remove malware on a system? To practice. To practice. To practice it. Yes, there are codes out there that are designed to download that will not harm the system that you can practice on and disable and take it out. I did not give that and that is a very great question. Great question. Anything else? Thank you very much and have a great day.